And I'm back. Ruby Tutorial 18 Part 2 now. Um, sorry it kind of cut out on me there again. I had it kind of minimized and I wasn't watching it, so didn't know when that timer was coming up. Anyways, so let's go ahead and hop back into it. So here we're looking at the uh, map passable for game character. We're going to go ahead and uh, replace or alias it. So we're going to go ahead and say game character map pass um, large event and then we're going to go ahead and copy the old method name up there move this one on down and then we're going to pass XY's so what we need to do is go ahead and follow um, something very similar to what we did up here we're going to go ahead and say for position in position list so we're just going to copy that on down here and then we're going to pull from that um, well, however, this is asking if that particular XY is passable for this character. So I think here we actually need to pass the XY. So we're saying, can I move here? Can I go to that position? Um, will I, am I able to occupy that position? And so this is one of the most important ones where we actually need to say, well, here are the positions you need to actually check um, to say all of my parts can fit in that. Um, so. We're going to go ahead and set a return value up here, and we're going to actually set this one to base true, so return value is true, and then we're going to have to prove it false, because there's more possibilities of it being true than there ever is of it being false. So that's why I chose that way. So um, what we're going to do is just go ahead and we are going to say, for position, let's see, we just want to ask the map, are you passable on pause.x and pause.y? So pause again being the position or one of the positions in which you can occupy. So by doing this, we're saying, hey, for the positions in which I will or could occupy in this location, are they all passable? And if that answer is false, then we're going to set the return value as false. And then we're then going to return the return value. Okay, so that one wasn't too bad. Next part, collide with characters. Um, this again is another one where we're going to be saying, hey, get me the XY positions. Um, another one here is events at XY. Um, although let's just follow its code here. So we'll just search up def XY, events XY. And it says, go through each one of those. And if the event pause, so we already handled pause question mark, if you recall. So that's already going to handle and return those events properly uh, for anyone who might be in that path. So we'll go back down here to our large events. And so we don't need to worry about this. Um, the only thing that we might care about is if the player is trying to move and they're trying to move into themselves in which case uh, we actually I, I don't think you should probably have a large character I, I think that kind of defeats the purpose but at the same time maybe you have a time where you have to or maybe you want to enlarge them so that, that it's harder to maneuver through something but technically speaking you can do the same thing through an event handler you could just say, hey, control this event, and uh, thereby have the event actually do all of that. But, I mean, either way, it's not a big deal. So, anyways, um, this is not of a concern um, that we actually need to worry about. Uh, but down here, we've got this pause and T. And let's see, really what we need to do is we actually need to check every position in which... Uh, we could collide with the character. So uh, what we need to do is we need to alias this method and we're going to go game character collide with characters large events and then copy the old name here that reminds me unless dollar sign at did I get it up here on the other one? Okay, 
that was the only one I missed. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and put that right here as well, unless dollar sign at. And then we're going to copy the old method here, and here we're going to say if is large is equal to false, which is the same thing as just putting the pound at the front of it there. And then so if that is the case, then we're just going to pass it back the old method. And then otherwise we're going to go ahead and continue on down, and then we're going to go ahead and say for pause in, and then what was our method name up here again? Positions x, y, and we're right there. Positions x, y, at the x, y being referenced. Okay, and then we're going to indent all of this like that. So we're going to go ahead and put this as pause.x and pause.y. And then we look through all that stuff. If the event priority is 1, which is same as player. Um, and then if it's same as player, then make sure that the player is not in the position. It's going to be pause.x, pause.y. Make sure that you can't walk over the boat and can't walk over the airship. Okay, so, and then remember that part I was telling you about a, about the game player, so if self dot is a game player, so here we're asking this checking event, are you the game player, in which case then skip over this. So we're saying if you are not, so false. Okay. I'm sorry, if you, yeah, that's correct. If you are not the game player, then check to see if you collide with the player. Otherwise, then check if you collide with all the other things. So, um, that should handle all of that. Um, let's see. I think that actually handles the most part, but um, now we actually need to handle the player because the player has its own special uh, map collide or map passable method. Um, I believe it still uses the regular collide with characters method, but uh, map passable, on the other hand, uh, is operated separately. So let's go look at that uh, for the game player and just search map passable here. And here we've got our method. So here we've got our vehicle types, etc. to say, you know, if you're checking this type or that type, then do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that on down here. We're going to create a new section, or not a new section, but just another class down here at the bottom. This is going to be our addition to game player, which is less than game character. And then we're going to go ahead and paste in our method. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and alias the map passable. So here we're going to say game player uh, large events map pass. And then we're going to go ahead and copy the old method name unless dollar sign at. And then we're going to copy the new event name for it. Put that in there. And then this is going to return the game map passable for the XY, but I'm thinking what we want to do is actually just send that back through map passable up here, which checks the game map passable. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take that um, and tell it to call it super method, because here it's just overriding it um, and saying, you know, do that. So we're just going to go ahead and say if is large because again game player is less than game character so it's going to inherit that method and then we're going to go ahead and say if you're large and you're walking so and and vehicle type and let's see boat ship airship so what we need to do is we just need to check that it's not one of those three so what probably the best thing to do is put like this. We put 0, 1, 2. So we create an array, dot include, and then we put uh, parentheses around this. So that's a method for the array saying, do you include the vehicle type? 
and then what we're going to do is just say is equal to false. So in other words, if you're large and you're not traveling in an item, uh, or in a boat ship or airship, then we are then going to go ahead and run our special case. Otherwise, it will just go ahead and return the uh, previous checking uh, details so that we don't have to worry about any of that. Okay, so here we're just going to call super xy. That's it. Um, because that is going to call map passable for game character and we've already gone through the details of actually checking that up here. So map passable will then go through all of that, checking the event to make sure that you can actually move on that location. All right, so super is again the method to call the parent or the um, yeah the the parent or the um, what's the word for it? I guess it's parent. That's all I can come up with. So uh, the parent class of this. So let's go ahead and apply that. I think we should be all set. Um, I think we've got everything in here. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Um, let's see, we should be able to walk wherever, and this event's going to be four spaces wide. Uh, oh, you know what, I forgot, um, I did forget one section, and that is offsetting the image for the uh, event. So what we need to do is look at the, um, well, you know what, let's go ahead and just play test it right now just to see how it works. And then let's just go ahead and plug this in. And what we should see is we can move one to the left, but we won't be able to move two to the left. One. No, we can't move at all. All right. That means I messed something up. That means this right here, because this is our map passable method. So did I mess it up here, or did I mess it up up here? A quick way to check that is just to tell this guy to move because if he can't move either, then we know that it's uh, for both classes, not just the one. And he's not moving. So we know that it is in our parent map passable that our problem exists. So we're going to go ahead and look at our first one. So we're going to go ahead and say our return was true, and then our position list was this position list. And then for each position in that list, call the old method for map passable to say, are you, can you pass on this particular uh, x y location? So I think that would check the old map passable, and the old map passable would just say game map passable. So it should be going through. Um, Let's see. Let's go ahead and just print out our return value here. And then, uh, I know it's something stupid I'm missing, but let's see. If you cannot pass at this x and y, then return false. All right, well, we'll plug it in and we'll see what happens. Um, however, what I think I want to do is actually print the position so we can actually see what the x, y is. Um, so we should be getting that for um, him when he tries to move is when we'll actually see that. And we'll see a number of print messages here. All right, so here he is at five five six five. Oh, it's Y first, so um, and then five six and six six. So it does look like he's checking all the positions he should be checking, and the return value is false. And then now he's checking seven eight Y seven. He's acting like he did move. Uh, I love those loops. And my magnifier is in the way, so I can't close that. Uh, just 
gotta close the window here. Magical hold enter key. All right. So, what is the position that's being checked that's being bad? Um, now, did I build this up here correctly? So we said last checked x y equals if it is equal to start x and start y, then return the last position list. Otherwise, position list clear and say for x in this and for y in that we say point new sx sy plus x and plus y so that should and uh, look to be all coming out correctly last checked xy point sx sy okay so that's where we're saying all right here's where i just barely checked store the positions and then return the list and let's see where is it exactly that we are dying? You know, it's probably easier is to just look at passable. And that is under game character. So it says, find the position. Is it a valid position? Are you using through techniques? If you are, then go through. Um, let's see, return false if you cannot pass through and then let's see return if collide with a character otherwise return true so let's go ahead and let's add a getting to here oops so if it returns a false on the map passable well you know what we already know it's returning a false on the map passable you know why is because because our other print message was right here and it was returning the false before we ever even got there. So let's find out what position is being returned as false. And so we're going to say return value equal, or we'll just print it and then we'll ask it for what point that was. So when it fails, it will tell us. You know, actually, let's go ahead and remove this off of him so that we actually get. Um, get off of the player because if once we fix it for the player it'll fix it for him as well so we'll go ahead and attempt to move and it's not going through that method because he's not large that would be why oh you know what I'm just being stupid you know why it's not working because you have to have something to walk on because you can't walk in midair you know that's totally lame. Hey, look at that. However, I am walking right through him. That is awesome, right? Okay, so what is our passable method for game player? Does he have a specific def passable. He does not. So that means he is, or you know what? Yeah. So he's just saying, am I going to hit something here? Um, but he has to have some sort of event checking. It's going to be, you know, is it just directly passable? His map passable is overriding and saying, just check the map. But he should still have collision detection stuff, um, which is where we're failing right now, is in our collision detection. So, let's go back here, large events. This is going to be the collide with characters section now. So we're saying now, if the character is large, and I'm sorry, if they are not large, then go ahead and execute the old method. If they are large, then we're going through all of this. Um, so here we are saying get the events unless we're going through the events then if true if self is a game event so if you're running it if one events running into another event then stop and then if 
the priority is of that event is a one or equal to um, same as character uh, then to go ahead and stop as well otherwise don't do anything so I think this right here is where we're having our trouble um, so let's go ahead and find out if we're getting any events return so let's just go ahead and say p event um, so this should only return the events that re at exist at that position um, these being the positions in which we are checking um, and however that's not going to return anything for our player because you know what actually let's just check this guy's here and see whether he's colliding with the player and it's not the vice versa so let's tell this guy to move right you know what? let's have him and let's just have him move right a couple of times move right move right okay so one move right should put him right here and then one more would put him right here but because that would conflict with the player in his cells then it should not allow him to move twice in which case he'll move one and then he'll stop so that's the test just to see whether or not he's colliding with the player one and he moved twice lame so it's both of them gotta love it when everything works right the first time but hey that's all right because this teaches you more in the process um, hopefully I mean hopefully I'm not rambling around too much but hopefully we'll be able to get to the bottom of this here pretty quickly all right so here we've got our positions and so we're then saying for each of the positions in which I occupy check each of those or I will occupy then check each of those for um, an event in that location um, now in the case of the event he's not going to return any events because uh, well he might return himself but that would be the only thing so what we need well he's not colliding with himself at all right now but let's go ahead and actually just put a p event in here to see whether or not we're actually finding ourselves as a conflict um, and then down here we're going to go ahead and say if self is a game player and so if I'm not a game player then go ahead and check for player collision player NT which checks my position at XY and my position with an XY returns oops, the other one and let's see here so if I do that then it's going to return a false or a true if I exist there as long as my position list my position list will only return one position if my character size is one it'll return four otherwise um, so then I should just check that quickly and return a true so I wonder if this is where we're running into our problem is whether or not we're not actually running into our collision um, getting to here okay another way you can do this is you can actually set up uh, the console uh, RPG Maker VX Ace um, actually does this for you in setting up a console um, so that um, you actually get to the um, so that you can actually output these here to the console um, so that you don't have to say uh, so that you don't have to keep on popping error messages you can just output them to the console and it makes debugging a little bit easier because then you don't actually have to stop the game in order to press OK on it in order to actually get your result granted it will fly by considerably faster but yes all right so we did not hit the position so why did we not hit it um, I spelt game character right didn't I uh, let's see here so we did not make it to here you know what? we didn't make it with a matching position let's actually just move this up a little higher and just make sure we're even going into that method and then we'll check it 
All right, so we are getting there, and it's checking it for eight, 12, So, why is it checking it so many times? And who is it checking it for each time? And, uh, you know, we are almost out of time here, so I'm going to actually just go ahead and terminate this here right now. I'll come back in just a moment, and we'll continue debugging this, okay? We'll see you in just a moment.